Hello everyone, this is Adam Levine, it's at New Egg Studio. Today is a big day today, we're launching the new RTX 40 series graphics cards powered by NVIDIA. With me I have KP and Kevin from Gigabyte, they're here to talk about their offering for the 4090 graphics cards here. Uh, welcome guys, give us a quick introduction and tell us a little bit about what you do. KP here, over at Gigabyte, I'm the channel marketing manager. I'm Kevin, and happy to be here, I'm the product marketing manager for our US office. Alright, let's get right into it. The question that's on everyone's mind is uh, about inventory. Last October, when the Ampere cards launched, we were right in the middle of a pandemic, and we all know what that did to the supply chain. What's changed for the 40 series as we, uh, you know, get the new Lovelace cards onto the market? I don't know all the ins and outs of our, our supply chain exactly, but I will say that we don't have to anticipate too many issues um, with 40 series supply. We do see a lot of die down in some of that peak demand, you know, crypto mining, for example, mm -hmm. shipping logistics issues. So a lot of those have been solved on, on the partner end anyway. And we anticipate that everyone looking for 40 series will be able to get their hands on one. And if you can't yeah. find one, all you need to do is to look for Oris or Gigabyte and we'll have them for you. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> and actually, you know, a lot of things have changed just even globally since a lot of those shortages and things happened. And so I think we're looking at a different outlook in terms of where us board partners are as well as even just on a global scale. All right, that's great to hear. So we're launching with uh, four 4090 offerings from, uh, there, well, there's two from Gigabyte and then two from Oris. Let's get into a high level overview of, of what those are. Gigabyte is going to be our more mainstream uh, gaming brand. And when you have your WinForce, this is our, our most um, entry level offering. So WinForce is this one here? It's going to be this guy right here. Yeah. And as you can see, they're already very big. So Gigabyte, while it handles most of your mainstream gamers, and this is going to be satisfying for a lot of people to have. On the other hand, we do have our Aorus cards. And the Aorus lineup of, of um, actually all of our hardware components is going to be more enthusiast and performance gaming. Something like this, you're going to see a little bit higher in terms of performance, clock speeds, power delivery. Um, you have a cooler aesthetic, at least personally, I think it's pretty cool. You'll have stuff like the RGB Halo fans. It's not lit up right now, but you're going to be able to see it uh, when you have it plugged in with the power. And then we have our edge view over here. So this is a customizable LCD screen. Right, you can put a, a GIF on, on the screen there. Anything you want, actually. Yeah. So temperature, your system, power readings, whatever. Uh, we have some presets that you can use, but you can also change it to whatever you're looking to do. All of our cards are enhanced from the original NVIDIA reference design. You're going to see different stuff like uh, mainly in the cooling this is where the board partners kind of shine yeah and you'll see uh, let's just take for example this one we so have a, this is a 30 series card just for comparison right that's right so this is our 3090 gaming which, oc which one oh gaming oc so that's the same it's going to be very oh, similar to, to the Windforce. this one okay yes. you'll see this is already very big card right okay. but then when you start getting into our high more higher end offerings you're going to have more power consumption more heat generation, you know, you're kind of pushing the performance levels, and then you're gonna need something like this guy. So, <laughs> if you can help me again. Round two. So, you'll notice a very drastic difference in size, and this is gonna be due to our cooling solution. So, when you're running your card, and you're pushing all your frames, you're getting your maximum performance, you're doing like 4K and everything, you're gonna want the best cooling solution possible, and what we've done is, we have something called a vapor chamber. So a vapor chamber is this is where it directly touches your touches your GPU. It touches your um, your your VRAM and everything. And from there we extend it with a bunch of heat pipes, leading to this massive heat sink. So it's the vapor chamber. You can't really see it in here. It will be a little tough to see yeah. since it's on the very bottom. It's the thing that makes direct contact with you know yeah. all the critical components. Okay. Um, it then passes the heat through these copper heat pipes into yeah. these massive heat sinks. So. Mm -hmm. Everything is bigger now because of the um, just the overall performance increase needs a you know a better cooling solution. Right. So some of the other features we have is going to be this uh, what we call the pass through screen. The heat sink is now extended far past the PCB than is normal. Right. And we've seen this for a few years now, but we've done it again here. And what it does is it allows air to pass through very very easily. Usually it'll be blocked by a backplate, might be blocked by PCB, but in this case you want optimum airflow, right? On the other hand, it's a little difficult to see on this side, but you'll notice we have these angular fins, mm. and that increases the, the heat dissipation with the, a larger contact area. So I'd say this is a very high level overview of what we have here. 
We do have one offering, which we didn't go over yet, which is the Water Force card. Right, with the external radiator, right? Exactly. And the that one's cooling. always pretty interesting to everyone yeah, yeah. because it is water cool. And this is a great option for people who are looking for water cooling without having to do their own custom loop. Mm. It's a 360 degree radiator. It has a large copper uh, heat sink attached to it. And it's a slimmer profile. Mm -hmm. So that that's always in everyone's best interest. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. these cars are big boys. Um, what are, were some of the design challenges that went into uh, uh, designing cards for this uh, Lovelace GPUs? Again, the big size, this was part of the challenge because we had mm -hmm. to develop a, cool, a cooling solution that could handle all the thermal temperatures. You know, it can go all the way up to the maximum performance without thermal throttling. That's always a big issue, right? Everyone's always talking about, hey, how do we keep the cards cool and what can we do about it? So the large size is mainly due exactly because we need to keep it running cool. It's definitely heavy, as you mentioned, and what we've done now is we included with every card, uh, it's for a 4090 series, we do have either a graphics card holder or a bracket included with uh, each one. And this will help kind of support your, your card in your case. Everyone always talks about, everyone knows, right? GPU sag. Yeah. Where it's like dangling on, it's hanging on by a, by a thread in your, in your motherboard. And you know, we, we do take that into account. And it's not like we can make the cooler smaller. So all we can do is make it more stable. One thing I do want to mention is our alternate spinning fans. You'll notice that they do face different directions and they do spin in opposite directions. And what this does is it covers any sort of dead zone in terms of airflow. For these new Bionic Shark fans, I know this has been on everyone's mind too. <laughs> yeah, tell me a little bit about the naming convention of, uh, of your fan uh, design here. Who, who came up with the name of Bionic Shark so fans? This is actually from HQ. Um, their engineers came up with this and it's based off of the shark skin. You'll notice that texture of surface. They're kind of like little teeth almost. And it's not only just the surface of the fan, but also the fan blade itself that we've kind of redesigned uh, the shape. And the purpose behind that is to not only increase the air pressure and the airflow, it also reduces the noise. So when it ramps up, you know, you're doing cyberpunk at 4K, trying to max out all your, your frames possible. Um, you know, we do also take that into account that not everyone wants to have a jet turbine, you know, going off next to them. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's noise reduction and also airflow increase. Uh, so say I'm planning out a build and I want to use a 4090 card. Um, what are some of the uh, power supply wattages I should uh, be taking into consideration uh, for a build like that? Okay, so first off, I just want to dispel all the rumors and worries everyone has of needing, you know, massive power supplies, you know, and, and the graphics card itself taking us, you know, 600 watts or more. And for our wind force and our water force, we would only need 850 watts. And for the uh, gaming OC and our master, then you would only need about 1,000 watts. Okay, so it, for it the whole is system. Yeah, yeah, it's for the whole system. It's a little bit more than I would say your average build, but, you know, you're accommodating a lot more power increase as well. Can you kind of tell me how uh, video card design comes about and uh, what the working relationship is like with NVIDIA? Yeah, so um, basically all our partners, we were going to get uh, the reference design from NVIDIA and we you know, make our own changes, but they all fall within their sort of you know, very strict requirements on what we can and can't do because it all has to stay faithful to the design. Mm -hmm. And obviously there's a certain standard um, that they have to maintain as well. And then from there, it's mainly a lot of our own cooling solutions and aesthetics and kind of like the premium features, like as you mentioned, the shark fan or like our, um, our halo lights that we've added to it. In terms of partnership, I mean, that's not just at the engineering level. It happens, of course, you know, post-launch where a lot of us guys, we, we want to make sure that all of our goals are aligned, the messaging is correct, and things of that nature. So there's a new power cable for the 40 series cards. Uh, uh, let's get into that a little bit. As you can see here, if you can zoom in a little bit on the card, this is the new 16-pin connector. And the way it kind of differs from your previous PCIe cables is um, it delivers a, a lot more um, amount of power to the card. So it's going to be 600 watts. And the reason why you kind of have so many power cables you had to plug in in the first place, each one's 150 watts. So right. this way, it kind of clears up the clutter. It gives you more stable, you know, ample power delivery to your card with 600 watts. Oh, that's exciting. I love that. Yep. Yeah. So let's say I want to overclock my graphics card. Uh, what kind of uh, features are built into these uh, uh, cards from Gigabyte and from uh, Aorus that will help me do that safely? You know, going back to the whole power thing, 
you know, any sort of overclocking where you're pushing your performance, you're going to need more power, stable power. And that's where that new cable comes in. You know, actually, as you move up in our, our product stack, the higher the model, it actually comes more um, factory overclocked by us as well. Mm -hmm. So um, some of the other factors that go into that is definitely going to be thermal design. And that's where, you know, these coolers really allow you to kind of get that performance headroom. So on all the graphics card spec sheets, there's a lot of attention on um, uh, power phases and graphics cards. Can you kind of uh, give me an explainer about how I should understand those? So power phases, this is a phrase that you might also see um, when we're, anyone's talking about motherboards. To get that performance out of it, you're going to want some way to help stabilize that power. So you can imagine it is like a bicycle. If you have a thin tire, you know, you're going to have more of a, a, a bumpy, mm -hmm. um, not a stable sort of ride. But the thicker your tire is, the more smoother your ride will be. And that's kind of the same way that the power phases work. All right, so we talked a little bit about each of the cards. Now let's go back through them and, uh, and talk about what kind of users and, and what kind of builds uh, would be the most appropriate for them. Okay, so uh, I guess starting from our top, the Aorus 4090 Master. This is going to be for the enthusiast gamer. You want all the bells and whistles on it. You can want all the, um, you know, the RGB design, the, L the LCD screen and everything. Uh, going down next would be the gaming OC. This is performance gaming still. After that, we go to the WinForce. And WinForce is going to be, um, this is your classic sort of graphics card, right? It's got everything you need, 4090 gaming and everything, but it just doesn't have as much as the other one. Moving on to, you know, Water Force. This is something entirely different. Yeah. And if you've never seen our Water Force cards, it actually looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's a black sort of cooler with some gold accent on it, and then has the all-in-one radiator attached to it. So that card comes with 460 millimeters of tubing and makes it really versatile to kind of where you want to uh, have the radiator be placed. Why would someone want to water cool their, their GPU? So not only do you get a slimmer profile, it makes it a little more versatile in terms of where you're going to put it, um, it, it, what builds you can actually um, accommodate the card in. Uh, another kind of weird advantage that you might not notice right away is that the power supply requirement for this system is actually on the lower end, it's 850 watts. Oh, wow. I, wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah. I put the pump and everything. Yeah. That's very interesting. So what kind of user would benefit from getting a 30 series graphics card? 30 series, you know, you, you still have a lot of those improvements and uh, uh, technology bumps that you did, that, that, that they came with. And, you know, Ampere itself was a great chip. And you have, you know, a more mature ray tracing, you have more mature tensor cores. You know, all the D, you know, DLSS, the, the AI improvements on that card, you know, they're still there. And the power requirements aren't as big. The cards aren't as big. So a lot of those limitations that 40, I wouldn't call them limitations necessarily, but you know, a lot of those drawbacks that 40 series do have, you're not going to see in 30 series. And they're still great cards able, you know, 30, 80 and up, you're getting 4K gaming. Anything under that, you're getting really good 2K gaming. Mm -hmm. So 30 series definitely still has a, a place in the world. All right, so KP, Kevin, thanks for coming over today to drop some knowledge about graphics cards, about how they're designed and engineered. Uh, I learned a lot, and I hope our viewers did too. So check the links below to shop for the new RTX 40 series graphics cards from Gigabyte and Aorus, now available on Newegg.com. Just say Newegg.